everyone. So first of all, sorry about yesterday. I had every intention of doing a live stream yesterday. I was going to announce it and everything, but it was one of those times where the day just kept getting further and further away from me. And I, I was going to put, I was like, well, I'll put something out that says live stream at five o'clock or whatever. But then I didn't actually get home last night until I think it was like 830. So by the time I got home, I was like, you know, it's, it's so late. I don't think anybody, we're on different time zones too. I was like, I don't think anybody's going to um, be, be able to watch anyway. And I was super tired. So I was like, you know, we'll just cancel it for today. So sorry about that. That was not the intention. It was just one of those crazy days. Uh, so a couple of announcements I wanted to make regarding that uh, for future live streams. So I, um, since, gosh, when was this? In July. I think it was back in July. I actually got laid off um, it because I, I used to work full time. I actually got laid off way back in July. And then my wife and I actually moved uh, to be closer to her job as well. So a lot, a lot of changes there. Um, and I've not, I've actually just been laid off this entire time, which is why I've had all this free time to do the live streams. Uh, but um, I actually have accepted employment with a company here in town, and I'm actually starting tomorrow at eight in the morning. So my schedule is going to be a little bit more sporadic now. So as far as like, a, I'm still absolutely 100% committed to doing the live streams every day. They're just going to be at different times. Um, as I get a schedule, I'll put it out like ahead of time. So you guys will know exactly when I'm going to be on. It's going to be the same format. You know, it's an hour long. We'll talk about whatever you guys have and whatever, maybe something um, I have and it'll be exactly the same. It's just going to be at a little bit different times. Uh, this week, um, so the rest of this week, so we got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the live stream is going to be at 6 p.m. Um, all three of those days. And I, I will make a little graphic and put it out too, but it's going to be at 6 p.m. So it's not going to be at 8 in the morning as it has been, or at least it's 8 in the morning for me. I don't know what time it is for you guys, uh, but it's not going to be at regular time because that's when I'm actually going into work at that time. So I just want to let you guys know that, and I will put all that out um, officially. And I'll actually do it this time. Not like when I said I was going to do it on Saturday and I didn't. I'll actually do it this time. So today, uh, so I do a Bible study um, on Sundays. I do a Bible study. And th this was a really interesting one. Uh, we had a lot of things brought up and some things I just kind of want to bounce off you guys here. So uh, first of all, in case, and I don't think anybody who um, who is in that Bible study does watch these live streams. I don't think they do. Um, but just in case they do, I mean, absolutely no respect by kind of bringing some of these these points up and, and bouncing them off you guys. I, I mean, no respect to anyone who said any of these things. Um, I just think that they're they're interesting and they're worth a conversation. So no disrespect is meant um, in any way, shape or form. And everything will, of course, uh, be uh, anonymous. I won't, I'm not going to be saying anyone's names or anything like that. So we had this Bible study and it's just a topical Bible study. And the topic that was presented right when we started was, um, okay, so God, you have him saying that he doesn't want anyone to perish, right? And I, I believe that's, that's in the New Testament. I, I kind of want to say it's in 2 Timothy, but don't quote me on that. But we've all heard that scripture. Uh, he doesn't want anyone to be, no, Peter says it, doesn't he? He says he's, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but all everyone to come to a knowledge of the truth. Peter, I believe Peter says that. Regardless, um, God's saying he doesn't want anyone to perish, okay? But then there's Judas, and this is what this person was bringing up. And he's saying, look, God, and, he, and this is kind of how he was presenting. He's like, God set him up. I mean, he, he literally set Judas up. Like, and he's, you know, where does he get off saying he doesn't want anyone to perish when we have an example like Judas? And uh, I think that some Old Testament scripture perhaps was brought up and okay, rightfully so. Judas is spoken about in the book of Psalms. And this was something that was spoken that was going to happen way in the past. Uh, that, you know, this was all going to go the way it went long before any of these people were actually born. I think it's in the early chapters of Acts, might even be Acts chapter one, where Peter quotes Psalms when he's talking about Judas and saying, um, you know, may, may his place be deserted. And he's saying another, another should take his place of leadership. We need to replace Judas. But he's quoting the Psalms of, that were speaking about Judas. And they had now recognized that, that this was all foretold. So kind of the person's issue with that was, um, are we sure God isn't picking and choosing here? Are, are we positive he's not doing that? Because that sure seems like what happened here with Judas. Um, and then it's just kind of, you know, people were chiming in different different things there. And um, one person says, you know, this, another person says that predestination is brought up and that's being thrown around. I, ha I haven't said anything yet because I'm just kind of listening. Um, somebody else says this. They say, what's the point then of us doing anything if everything's already written in stone? Um, you know, if, if this is all predetermined, and apparently it is, because we have, you know, Judas is our is our subject case here. Um, apparently, everything's already predetermined. So why 
what's the point of us doing anything then? Um, Judas could have never believed. And, you know, that was kind of being thrown around. Judas never had an option. He never could have believed because this was all decided for him. Was he set up? Was he purposely the fall guy? Um, so I think that I, I kept hearing a, a lot of different things, but the concept of free will started getting tossed around. And, um, you know, well, God, you know, he, he, he must have had free will. Um, God gives everyone free will. And I started hearing that talk tossed around. And, and you guys know, if you've listened for a little while, you know my thoughts on free will. So I finally do chime in here a little bit. And I said, hey, you know, let's talk about free will. Um, let's talk about free will. Because nowhere in the New Testament is free will mentioned. In fact, nowhere in the Old Testament, spare one, is free will mentioned. Uh, free will is mentioned in the law. There is a free will offering. Um, it's an offering if, you know, you had different offerings that were required, and then you had just a free will offering. If you wanted to bring an offering, you could. Um, but it's not actually required. It's just because you wanted to. That is the only mention of free will in the entire scriptures, is, is right there. Um, I don't see free will in the scriptures. And that's what I was kind of sharing with them. I was like, I know that's very different, probably, than what we've all heard. We've heard pretty much everything spins around free will. But really what we have in, in the scriptures is you're a slave to sin or you're a slave to righteousness. It's not free will. It's slave is not a freeing term. It's almost the opposite of that, isn't it? Um, if one is a slave, you have a master and you're compelled to do a certain, you're, you're compelled in a certain direction. Um, in the scriptures, again, Paul sets up sin or righteousness. Sin is no longer your master because you're not under law, you're under grace. Um, but righteousness now is your master, or maybe escalate that a little bit higher because he also says God's slaves in that same chapter. So I want to read that a little bit. Um, this is what I shared with them, and then I'll tell you the responses I got to it. Let me jump over here, Romans 6. Okay, so um, going down here a little bit, I had, um, when I move monitors, I this text tends to jumble around here a little bit, but it's, it is in Romans chapter 6. Um, so let's start here in 16. I think, I mean, the whole chapter was just awesome, but let's start in 16 because that's when he starts really hitting this concept home. He says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whether you are a slave to sin, which leads to death or obedience, which leads to righteousness. Um, now that kind of sounds like a free will thing, doesn't it? It's like, well, you can be a slave to sin or you can be a slave to righteousness or obedience, I guess, which leads to righteousness. That's how NIV renders it, at least. Um, you can choose. So choose wisely here. Um, you know, what's it going to be? You know, the choice is on the table. But we just have to keep reading here because in verse 17, he says, but thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Um, so you've moved from one to the other, but the slave term is actually retained. Uh, now it's a positive thing, though. You've, you're, you've become allegiant from the heart. I mean, from the inside out, you're now righteous from your core and you're doing righteousness. You're a slave to righteousness. Um, he goes down here. Um, Verse 20, I'm going to skip over a couple just for uh, time's sake. Uh, he goes down here in verse 20. He says, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. So righteousness is a control. He's saying, but when you were slaves to sin, you, didn't, you weren't controlled by righteousness. You were, had no relation to it. And I think some translations actually say you had no relation to it. Um, I think so. I think I've read that in different translations. But NIV here says you were free from the control of righteousness. You're free from that um, when you were a slave to sin. Um, but now you're under the control of righteousness. Uh, he says, what benefit did you reap at that time when you were a slave to sin of the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But then he goes on and he says, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap is holiness and the result is eternal life. Okay, so again, there's one or the other. There's one or the other, you know, um, you're slave of sin or slave of righteousness. So I, I brought that up and I was just kind of like, you know, I, I've heard all the free will teachings too. Like I've, I've heard that. I've actually like kind of before I really dug into the scriptures, I would write different things spinning around that concept that, um, that you know, we, that there is free will and it's all free will. And that's how we explain a lot of this stuff away. And Judas had free will and everybody had free will. And, you know, that's, but I don't see that. I just, I don't see that. that it, I don't see the scripture speaking of that. Now, Here's where I think it might get a little complicated, though. So just let me know what you think of this. 
There has to be some kind of a freedom to choose, though, after the cross, because you, you basically have two options then at this point. You have faith or you have unbelief. And you have to be able to repent toward faith. You have to be able to do that. Um, the power of sin that held everyone captive has to have been broken in order for you to do that. So, so that's where I think it gets a little bit complicated. We have scripture that says that. Um, Hebrews chapter 2 says that. That um, Jesus, by his death, um, broke the power of him who held the power of death, that is the devil, and freed those from all their life were held in slavery by their fear of death. So we have scripture that says things like that. Um, so if that power is broken at the cross, and I believe it would be, as the Lamb of God took away the sins of the world, now humanity would be would be left with a choice. Which one, you know, which what is it going to be? Or is it going to be faith or is it going to be you remain in death, you remain in unbelief? Um, but I want to expand on that a little bit, though. I want to expand on that a little bit. Here's what I see. And this is, this is, this is Jeremiah's opinion, okay? So Jesus says in John, uh, Matthew chapter 7, uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven famously, right? Um, uh, he says that, but only those who have done the will of my Father. In John chapter 6, he tells us what the Father's will is. He says, for my Father's will is that anyone who looks on the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. That is the will of God. Will, capital W, of God. The will of God is that you look to the Son and believe in him. Okay? And that's, incidentally, what the crowd in Matthew 7 didn't do. They did every all, they did all the works, they did all, they jumped through all the religious hoops, but they never believed in Jesus. They didn't do the will of the Father. That's why they weren't entering the kingdom. Um, Jesus is the door. He is the way. Uh, we don't enter um, into God's rest. We don't enter into the kingdom of heaven except through him. And he tells us that. He tells us that over and over. He beats that into our heads in the Gospel of John. Um, and the New Testament authors do that as well. So they didn't do the will of the Father. The Matthew 7 crowd didn't do didn't do um, the, the, the will of the Father. Didn't do it. So uh, going, going down here a little bit more. So we have, we have wills. We have, we, you know, the work of God is to believe in the one he sent. That's the will of the Father, okay? Jesus also presents an alternative. Uh, when he's, and he's kind of in an exchange again, of course, with the Jewish leaders. Um, they, they eventually say, so it's so funny, actually, because they're, they're mad at him because he claimed God was his own father, all right? And Jesus says, um, if, if, you know, if God were your father, you would believe me, essentially, because um, I, I came from him. Uh, this is John chapter 8, uh, verse 42. We'll start there, okay? So Jesus answered and he said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar in the father of lies. So, so interesting to me, Jesus is saying, I've come to do not my will, but my father's will. We, as the children of God, are in the will of the Father. We do the will of the Father, but we're in the will of the Father. More importantly, we have done the will of the Father by looking to the Son and believing in him. But there's an alternative. And Jesus is talking about this with these unbelieving Jews. And he's saying, you are doing the will of your father, the devil. Um, so I see a little bit of a, of a compare and contrast there too. I see a, us, the children of God, we do our father's will. Um, we, we do do that. Um, but it's really his will. It's we we have um, and I guess you could look at it past tense as well if you know if it's if it's singular you know the will of the Father is to look to the Son and believe in Him and I think that's what Jesus says so we've done the will of the Father but we're in the will of the Father I think a little bit more importantly and probably better would be a way to put that um, but the unbelievers it's the opposite um, they're doing the will of their father the devil they desire their will is to carry out His will um, their hearts are in alignment with Him uh, with the devil they're slaves to sin. And we are slaves to righteousness, and we're allegiant from the heart to the pattern of teaching that's, well, we're, we obey from our heart the pattern of teaching that's claimed our allegiance. Uh, one of my live quotations, sometimes they get flubbed up, but what we just read in Romans chapter 6, okay? So my question is, do either one of those present, do, do those harmonize with free will? The idea that we can just move around and, and, you know, and, and kind of, you know, everything can be explained away with free will. Because again, I see a compulsion. I see a compulsion, one or the other. Um, there's two fathers that are presented. You have the devil and you have God. 
And you're either the, de the devil's child or you're God's child. And John, in his epistle, picks up on this a little bit and starts calling people children of the devil. Um, so you, you, it's not, this isn't the only spot that this is, this is mentioned, but it's not mentioned much. Uh, but regardless, you have, you have the devil being a father and you have God being a father and you have the children doing the will of their father, um, depending on who you belong to. So again, I really don't see free will there. I see compulsion. Um, later on, I think it's in 1 Timothy, um, Paul says something in regards to uh, opponents must be gently instructed, um, hope, something about uh, perhaps God will grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and that they may escape the trap of the devil because they've been taken captive by him to do his will. Um, something, something in regards to that is mentioned, I believe, in 1 Timothy. So we have other scriptures we can use to kind of kind of support that. But as far as free will, the way that the world defines free will, the way that I think, unfortunately, a lot of our Christian teachers define free will, I don't see that. I don't see that in the New Testament. I see one or the other, slave of sin, slave of righteousness. Uh, let me read your comments because I saw some of you guys were chiming in on this. Um, oh, go on. <laughs> Good morning, Manuel. Um, by Grace New Covenant, it says, In my opinion, we have free will to accept the best free gift of salvation and everything beautiful um, and gracious that comes with that. And I'm so happy uh, that we that we do. Um, so there has to be, you're, you're absolutely right, there has to be some kind of a, there is an ability, obviously, we know that, to choose faith or choose unbelief, to, to believe in the Son or to not believe in Him. We know that there has to be at least that. Um, my, my thing is, and a, a couple of, points I would raise, and I, I don't mean to get too deep, but so before the cross, everyone would be slaves of sin, right? Everyone would be slaves of sin because you're not a slave of righteousness. If there's no, if Jesus hasn't died, he hasn't taken away sin, he hasn't been raised to life, um, nobody has been changed from the inside out. So everyone before the cross would have to be a slave of sin. Um, now we saw that even being a slave of sin, you had people that could listen to Jesus. They could follow him around. They were confused as heck. All the disciples are confused about absolutely everything. Um, but they can, they, they can, be interested. They can follow him. They can believe in him. But I, I would almost say believe, put it in air quotes, um, because they didn't, they, you know, they didn't really believe necessarily until they saw the resurrected Christ, until they had that encounter with him. Um, they, they believed, they said they believed, but I don't think it's really that same faith um, that, that we have on this side of the cross, that same saving faith. I don't really think it was necessarily that. That's my opinion on it, though. It doesn't mean that's true. That's just what I, what I see. Um, so, but on the other side of the cross, you have the, the power of the devil is broken. Um, and now people can look to the Son and, and believe in Him. So there, there is, there is at least that. There is at least that. And I think that that's where, you know, the idea of free will might gain some traction. Uh, you know, the kind of the worldly concept of it might gain some traction there. But my thoughts are okay. But after the fact, again, now you've moved from being a child of the devil to a child of God. You're now a slave of righteousness. So there's, there's a difference now. It's not again, you've moved from Adam to Christ. Um, but even in Christ. Uh, you're you're free people, but as far as this I, this concept of free will again, I'm not sure it harmonizes with that because you, you're a slave to righteousness. Righteousness is what you do; it's your default setting now. So is love. Um, there's things about you that are just totally different. They're not even they're not even like earthly or, or human things. Uh, loving from the heart, being righteous from the inside out. This is all spiritual stuff uh, that, that comes from being in the family of God. This we can't find any worldly examples of this. So. You're different, you're new creation, and new creation does things differently than old creation because that's who you are. So I don't, again, I, I have a hard time harmonizing the, the concept of free will with that, but my thoughts on it, uh, again, doesn't mean I'm right. It's just, it's my thoughts on it. Um, by Grace New Covenant, it says, uh, believers may be slaves to righteousness uh, because that means we cannot in any way fall out of righteousness and everything we have been gifted um, and regarding our relationship with our, our beloved. Uh, absolutely. Um, so we're uh, looking at that and, and, and defining slaves to righteousness, meaning it's immutable, cannot move from righteousness, period. It's not happening. We're, we're, we're stuck with that, essentially. We're stuck, we're stuck being righteousness. How, how horrible, right? We're, we're, stuck, we're stuck being righteous. But, but no, what, what a wonderful thing um, that, that we would actually be almost held captive by righteousness using uh, the terminology slave there. That's a very good way to put, to look at it. Um, uh, continuing, uh, God, I believe, is also based on our free will um, because God wouldn't want us to be like robots. Yeah, so, and that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm working through, um, is that, because obviously we're free people and we can do what we want. Um, but building on that, if we're aligned, we do our Father's will. 
Um, just like the children of the devil do their father's will. We do our father's will from the heart. Um, so what we want is what God wants. Um, we're perfectly aligned with him. We're in the son who's in the father. Jesus says, well, when he prayed in John chapter 17, it was that we would all be one just as he and the father is, is one. So we're all, we're all one, one with the son, one with the father. You can go backwards and forwards with that scripture says both. Um, we're in the sun. The sun is in us. You can, you can go backwards and forwards with it. Uh, we, we have scripture that says all these things. Uh, so, so we're one with them. We're perfectly aligned with the Father and the Son. We have the Spirit living within us. Um, so our will is, is his will. That's, that's so, so that, you see, like, you see, you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's just like, I, and I don't want, and maybe, maybe I'm going too far. Maybe I'm, I'm diving too deep into it or overthinking it, perhaps. Um, but I think the reason I bring all this up, and I brought it up in the Bible study, and I think it was, I don't mean anything bad by this, but I think it was way too much uh, bringing all that up. I think it was way too much. I think it was a lot of scriptures no one had ever heard. I think it was weird saying slaves to sin, slaves to righteousness. I don't think that people were familiar with that. I don't think people were comfortable with that, saying slaves to righteousness. We're, we're God's slaves. You know, we're slaves to righteousness. I don't think they were comfortable with that. Um, I run into that all the time. I don't. I almost don't know how to approach I, I talked to my wife about it. It's a constant frustration. I don't mean it in like a bad way. Like I'm frustrated with the people, but I'm, I'm like, I don't know how to make the, the scriptures maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know what, what words I'm searching for, but I have a hard time with that. Uh, when I, I feel like I'm like, well, we got scriptures that kind of answer these questions and we can go to it, but it's like, nobody understands it or they, they hear it, but it's like, they want to just, they're not receptive to it or something, or they don't really want to dive into it. They just kind of want to sit where they're at with it. You know, okay, well, I, I don't know. And I, I don't mean anything bad against anyone with that. It's just, it's, it's, it, I find it like difficult to communicate this type of stuff because it, it's weighty. I mean, it, it's really weighty. It's really weighty. Um, so, and it's, it's ultimately, you know, it's not really important ultimately I'd say, and I know how that sounds, but really the gospel's simple. I mean, we look to the sun and we believe in him. Um, the gospel is really simple. And if they've done that, then do they need to know about the slaves to send their slaves to righteousness? I think it's super helpful. I, I really think that's a good thing to know is that, hey, you're different from the inside out. Um, again, righteousness is your default setting. Love is your default setting. I think that's really good for for our brothers and sisters to know. But ultimately, if they don't know it, um, is it, is, you know, is, is something, no, I mean, they have the Holy Spirit living within them. So I don't know if I, I, I just worry this, this is, this is, I guess this is what I worry about. Um, kind of mixing in worldly philosophy with, with, with Christianity, with the way, whatever we want to call it. I worry about that because I think, and especially if you're not really familiar with who you are in Christ and what Christ has done to you, what the new creation is like, um, if we're mixing in ideas from the world, I worry that we become raw meat for mixed covenant theology, for all the bad teachings that come from a lot of our churches. Um, I worry that we're just, we're just become a lot more susceptible to that. Um, if we don't know that we're righteous from the inside out, if we don't know we have a new heart and a new spirit, then we might be more susceptible to listen to a teacher who's telling us we're sinners with sinful natures, we're wicked from the inside out, we have wicked, deceitful hearts, and everything that is an enemy of the cross. Um, we, we might listen to that. We might start believing that about ourselves. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of why I think it's like, well, is it necessary that they know all this? No, not really. But it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help them out tremendously. Like if they know who they are in Christ, it's going to help out tremendously. It's going to affect every area of your life. Um, at least it, it did for me. And I think that a lot of you guys have shared that that's been the case for you. Understanding the gospel and understanding Jesus has affected absolutely everything. And a lot of us were in religious camps before we didn't, we may have been saved because we may have believed in the son of God. So we may have been saved, but it's like, we didn't really, it was that one third gospel where Jesus provides eternal life. He doesn't save you from sin or he doesn't save you from death. Neither one of those things, but he does provide eternal life in the future uh, at some point. Um, everything else is Old Testament. Um, everything else about your existence now is Old Testament. So um, a lot of us lived in that for a long time. And now that we've, you know, uh, we've realized the freedom that Christ set us free from, it has really changed everything. Um, it's really changed the way we speak to others. It's changed the way we looked at others. It changed the way we look at ourselves. It changed the way we speak about ourselves. So it, it's really, it's really big. Um, doesn't, again, doesn't necessarily mean we weren't saved before. It's just maybe we hadn't like truly um, enjoyed that freedom um, that Jesus has provided for us. So these kind of things, like I want, I want, I want people to know it, uh, but it's, it's, sometimes it's difficult to communicate. So 
Uh, going on here a little bit, I wanted to, let me pull up my notes here because more things were said in this conversation. So I think I flubbed that up like when I brought in the, you know, okay, well, I don't think free will is actually, you know, we're, we're basing everything that we're saying here on free will. Um, I don't see that in the New Testament. So maybe we need to realign. And I didn't say it like that because that sounds like really jerky. Like maybe we just need to realign. It, it wasn't that. It was just like, well, let's, let's, Let's run some of this through scripture here and see, you know, do, do we have that? Is that, is that, is that a valid thing to do? Um, so at, at any rate, um, kind of, I say all those things didn't really have any sort of an effect. Um, but, uh, we kind of just return to this original point. Um, I think what they heard was the slave part. And then they said, okay, well then it, do, it really doesn't matter. Like if, if, if that's the case and you, you, you know, you're compelled in one direction or the other, then truly all of your days are written in stone and it doesn't mean nothing you do matters. They kept saying that nothing you do matters because this is all set. This has all already been um, decided for you. And I kind of was like, they kept bringing up predestination and I was like, I just hit him with this thing from Romans. Do I really want to get into Abraham's promise and that all peoples will be blessed through you, you know, the thing we talked about last week, I'm like, do I really want to go into that? Because that's going to be, I'm giving them too much. Um, so I kind of just dismissed all the mentions of predestination. I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do with that. You know, if I would be happy to explain that, but again, I don't, I don't know if, if it's too much at once. I don't know if, if that would be something that would be helpful at all, even. Um, so, so going through that, you know, it's it just kind of going back and forth, going back and forth. Um, and then Something else I kept hearing throughout this whole conversation is what I interpret is a misunderstanding of the gospel. And I've shared this with you guys, and I'm going to share it again. I kept hearing believing in God is how you're saved. I kept hearing that or, 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 or knowing God. They're actually different versions of it. Knowing God, believing in God, and that's how you're saved. Um, and if you've done, if you've, if you've know God or you believe in him, then this, this, and this, and this um, after that. And I kept hearing it, and I kept hearing it, and we were talking about different things. I mean, it was it was a it was a bunch of subjects. One of them was, um, are you know, are, are we entirely sure about the cross and the and the death of Jesus and the resurrection? Are we entirely sure about that? Because if Jesus is God, then he can't die. That was one of the things that were brought up. And I was like, I don't even know where to go with that. Um, human beings can die. The word became flesh, but I, I didn't really know where to go entirely with that, so I didn't say anything on it. I do have some thoughts on it, so I'll I'll share that after this. Um, but it was it was it was kind of just going down going down that that path, um, just just all these different things. But eventually, I kept hearing believing in God, believing in God, believing in God, and um, I said, I was like, I, I do have just a question. I was like, I just want to put this question out there. Nobody has to answer it, or you can you can answer it if you want to, but nobody has to answer it. Um, do you see a difference between believing in God versus believing that Jesus is the Son of God? Does anyone see a difference with that? And it was just quiet. No one, no one really said anything. And um, I don't think anyone actually answered that, to be honest with you. I don't think anyone actually answered that. I think it was just, it was just silent. And, um, and I, I, I think I spoke after that. I said, uh, to follow up, um, I'm hearing a lot of, we need to believe in God. We need to know God. Um, I worry that that's not the gospel. Um, I worry that that sounds really good. And it sounds so, it sounds so incredibly right, but it's actually wrong. Um, because scripture doesn't present that as salvation, that you need to believe in God. It, it just doesn't. I know, again, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Like saying that, that sounds wrong. We need to believe in the Son of God. We need to look to the Son and believe in Him. Um, I fear, and this is a Jeremiah opinion, does not mean this is true. This is a Jeremiah opinion based on observance and what I read in the scriptures, okay? I fear that this believing in God and you're saved is a sneaky, sneaky, um, false teaching, actually being a false teaching. I believe it's, it's masquerading is one of the best phrased false teachings ever. Um, I believe that because that's not what we see. And if somebody's saying, I, I know God, or I believe in God, well, okay. Um, what about Jesus? What, what about, what about him? What about the son of God? Um, no one comes to the father except through the son. Uh, no one who denies the son has the father. And so I said that, and somebody somebody said back um, to me, and it, they said, "Well, um, it's it's uh, it's all the same thing. It's it's all the same thing. Believing in God or believing in Jesus, it's the same thing. Uh, uh, it, do, it doesn't matter. It, you know, you, whatever the phraseology you're using isn't really important. Um, it's it's the same thing um, because uh, you know if you believe in God, you do believe in Jesus because they're the same." And I said this back, and 
just tell me what you think of this. I said, well, tell that to the Jews. Um, because, and I, I don't, I worded it more kindly than that, but tell that to the Jews. And I said, um, the Jews believed in Yahweh, didn't they? They had the temple, they had the sacrifices, they had the work, the, everything. They're doing all the steps, and yet not one of them ascended. Um, these teachers of the law, these Pharisees, these, these um, elders, unless they believed in the Son of God, they did not ascend. They did not enter the kingdom. Jesus told them they weren't going to enter the kingdom. Why? Because they wouldn't believe. He said that the tax collectors and the prostitutes were entering the kingdom of heaven before the Pharisees. He said, just so you know, uh, and he says, and why are they? He says, why are the tax collectors and the prostitutes entering the kingdom? He said, because they believed in me and you don't. Um, you don't believe in me. Um, so, so that's, you know, and so I said that, I was like, tell that to the Jews. Tell that to these, these incredibly religious men and women of Jesus' day that did not enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, they did believe in God. They absolutely believed in God. They didn't believe in the Son, and that's the gospel, is to believe in the Son. Um, and I worry that what we've done, especially like the further we go in mixed covenant theology, which we've gone far, haven't we? But the further we go down this rabbit hole, and the more that we, we separate from the New Testament and we embrace the Old Testament, and we fancy ourselves to be Old Testament Jews living under the law, I think the further that we do this, the, the smaller Jesus becomes, he's fading away. He's like when you're driving away from your house and it's shrinking in the rearview mirror. That's what Jesus is like in mixed covenant theology. He's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, I worry that we're just, we, we lose the gospel doing that. And we, it's not, it, well, it's all the same thing. You know, you believe in God, you believe in Jesus. No, it's not. It's not the same thing and it's never been the same thing. If it were the same thing, why do we need Jesus? Uh, why couldn't we just all believe in God? Um, like Abraham did. And I, I brought that up too. And I said, well, no, Abraham believed in God. He had his faith credited to him as righteousness. That's true. What does Hebrews chapter 11 say about Abraham though? What does it say about that kind of faith? It, he still had to be brought into the new covenant. He was living by faith when he died. He never received the things promise, promised. God had something better planned for us. So only together with us could anyone in the Old Testament ever be made perfect. Only together with us, they had to be brought into the new covenant as well. Um, Jesus had to happen. It had to be Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. It had to be him, even for the Old Testament people. It had to be him. It's always had to be him. Um, that's why the Jews didn't descend, is they never believed in the Son. They may have believed in God, but it's still, that's not, that's not the gospel. Believing in God is not the gospel. Now, it is my, it's my belief, using the word believe a lot, it's my belief that let's say that, so the law can't save anybody, right? And let's say that this isn't the time before Christ hasn't come. Works the law, insignificant. Can't save anyone, all right? The, the atonement doesn't even work. The book of Hebrews says that the animal atonement doesn't even work. It's impossible for the blood of goats and bulls to take away sin. So nothing in the law works. It's weakened by the flesh. It's holy, righteous, and perfect, but the problem was with the people, okay? So the law doesn't save anybody. It doesn't work. It's a broken system. But let's say that you're in that time. You're a Jew living under the law and you believe God, and you have your faith credited to you as righteousness. I believe that could have always happened, and you would have been like Abraham, and you would have been brought, um, you would have been brought under the new covenant. I thought, you know, later on, when the Son of God came, it's my belief that you would have done that. And, and, you, and I, it's my belief that anyone ever, Jew or Gentile, could have always looked and believed in God and had their faith credited to him as righteousness. Um, but that doesn't take away the fact that you still have to enter through the Son. And that's what Hebrews chapter 11 teaches us. It's still through the Son of God that that person is saved. Not just by, not just by doing that, um, because the, the Son of God takes away our sin. Uh, he takes away our sin. Um, they, their faith was credited to him as righteousness, but again, they still need the blood of the Son. They still need, they still need that. Um, they need his life. We, um, anyone, wherever they're at on the time spectrum, lives because Jesus lives. Um, they, they live because he lives. They still needed his resurrected life. They needed everything that we have. That's why only together with us were they ever made perfect, as the book of Hebrews says there. So I, so I, I said some of those things. I didn't say all of it. I didn't go that far, but I said some of those things. Like, I don't think that that's a good point, um, that not meaning rude or anything, saying, oh, believing in God and believing in Jesus is exactly the same, um, because again, tell that to the Jews. So, uh, so at any rate, uh, so somebody says back to me, they're like, okay, well, it is the same because of the Trinity. And you guys know how I feel about that, but, but you know, it, it is the same because of the Trinity and they're all the same. So it doesn't matter if you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, you believe in the Holy Spirit. And I was like, eh, again, Nowhere in the New Testament does it say it. First of all, Trinity is never mentioned. That's strike one for me. The Trinity is never mentioned. Um, but so I really wouldn't 
put a lot of stock into that and say, well, because of the Trinity, which is something Tertullian invented in the second century, um, because of that, it's all the same. Uh, nowhere in scripture is a Trinity mentioned. Now, I understand, you know, there's different instances in scripture where we can kind of put that together and that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with um, nothing wrong, first of all, with using the word Trinity. If you want to use that, you're, f you're free to use that. New Testament doesn't use it, but if that, you know, if you want to use it, that's fine. Um, if you want to, you know, kind of go with the model of the Godhead where you have the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, that's fine. You're free to, free to do that. Um, but as far as looking to that, I would caution, again, this is me, this is my opinion. I would caution against teaching saying you can believe in the Father, you can believe in the Holy Spirit, and you're saved. I don't see that. I don't see that anywhere in the New Testament. And again, it's frightening. It sounds like one of those very close to the truth false teachings, doesn't it? It sounds like, like you could sell that. Because it sounds right. It, it just, it sounds right. So I didn't get to talk about the Trinity and I, I thought about it and I was just like, this is, you know, I'm, everybody's going a million miles an hour with all these thoughts. And I was like, this isn't going to help. So I'm, so what I tell them, the Trinity is not in, in the New Testament. Um, I, I don't know. So I just left it at that and we timed out, you know, so I, I didn't get to the Trinity. I think I'll talk about it next week. And I don't know how I'm going to talk about it yet. Um, I think they'll be fascinated to know it's never in the New Testament. I think that'll probably get everyone's interest and uh, just say that, look, so this this idea, um, first of all, let's talk about Tertullian and I'm going to talk about him a little bit. He's a Montanist, okay? A Montanist is new prophecy. Montanism means new prophecy. Tertullian believed in new prophecies beyond the New Testament, okay? Is that, do we believe in new prophecies beyond the New Testament? I mean, is that is that something we should accept? It? It's, what does the New Testament say? Don't treat them with contempt, but test them. Um, but really, do we, does God speak to us through prophets um, or does he speak to us by his son? So Tertullian, Tertullian is running around, you know, following these Montanists who believe that they are receiving messages from God on this side of the cross. I don't like that. First of all, I'm, I, that's no good. So I'm not, I'm not too happy about that. Tertullian believed in three water baptisms to fully remove your sins. Does water baptism remove sin at all? Or does the blood of the son remove sin? You know, so, so there's, there's an error. There's something. Tertullian believed in something called subordinism. He believed that the father was the ultimate God and that the son and the spirit were lesser gods. Um, does that sound right? Is, is the father the ultimate God and then the son and the spirit are, are lesser? Well, Jesus does say something like that. And I understand where Tertullian gets that from. He says the father is greater than him. Jesus says that. Um, so there, I, could, I could see I could see somebody misunderstanding in, in, in doing all that. I, could, I can understand that. Uh, but but still, do we believe that? Do we believe in subordinism? That uh, I think this, I think, and I don't know for a fact. I've heard different versions of this. I think in subordinism, God is like the ultimate. Then there's the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and then there's the Spirit, who's like a really lesser version of them. Um, I think that's what what he what he taught there. Um, he's the one who invented the Trinity. He he came up with the idea of the Trinity. This this is the guy. He also was credited with being one of the earliest mixed covenant uh, theologians. Because of Gnosticism, which was so rampant in the late first century and second century, um, what Tertullian did is he um, he wanted to validate the Old Testament, okay? And the Gnostics were throwing the Old Testament out. They're saying that's an evil God. They called him the Demiurge. They're throwing the Old Testament out. What Tertullian did is he, because he was so desperate to save the Old Testament and to validate it, he did this with it, with the New Testament, and he mashed it all up and he created what was known as baptized Judaism by his critics, okay? Because he was obsessed with water baptism and he was obsessed with Judaism. There was a little Jesus sprinkled in there and that was his message. And it was baptized Judaism. So this is the guy who invented the Trinity, who came up with this idea of the Trinity. And all that being said, that worries me greatly that this is something that's that's so adopted and we have different versions of it. We have different triangles that say different things. And I'm just like, but, there, but none of that is laid out in the New Testament. Also, it's extremely confusing. Uh, if you try to explain that to somebody, you try to explain, well, there, there are three different persons. They're distinct, they're the same, or however it's gonna, um, however we word it. Um, that's, that's hard for people to understand. I think there's a reason it's not in the New Testament. It's, it's hard to understand. Um, what I see, and this is me personally, I don't really see a trinity um, in the New Testament. Um, I see three three mentions. You have a father, you have a spirit, and you have, you have the son. I do see that. Um, I see a father and a son who have the same spirit. That's, that's what I see. 
the, not meaning that they're not one, because of course they're one. The Father and the Son are one. Not, not meaning that. And I think that's what a lot of people hear when, 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 we, when we say that or, or I say that. I think a lot of people hear, oh, you're saying Jesus isn't God. No, not at all. Um, I'm saying the Trinity is not in the New Testament. That's, that's what I'm saying. And I, we're taking Tertullian's word for it. Um, I don't care for Tertullian personally. I think he got pretty much everything wrong. I can't, I can't look at Tertullian and say, um, well, you, you know, you really had a great point there, Tertullian, with your three different baptisms to remove sins or your new prophecy or your whatever it's going to be, um, you know, or your mingling of the Old Testament with the New Testament. You really, you know, you really knocked that one out of the park there. Um, I don't, there's no Tertullian teaching that I admire. So I, I, I'm worried. I'm worried about that, uh, you know, that, that, we're, that we're, we're importing that. You know that Tertullian, so this is another thing, I don't want to keep ranting on this guy, okay? Do you know he was so radical that the Catholics um, said he was too far away from the scriptures and they wouldn't accept him as a saint? Uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't grant him sainthood because he's too, he's too far away from the scriptures, okay? Tertullian, the Catholics said he was too far away from the scriptures, okay? Now, the Catholics are pretty far away from the scriptures, aren't they? with the saints and with Mary and all the stuff that never appears anywhere in the New Testament and everything that they do with the different offices and all of that, you'd say they're pretty far away from the New Testament, aren't they? Um, they looked at him and said, this guy's a radical, <laughs> okay? The Catholics wouldn't accept him, but we, we, we got him. I mean, we, we don't call him a, a church father. Um, we, don't, we, won't, we won't call him that, but we, you know, we took some of his ideas um, Again, I'm worried about that. Not that, again, is there anything wrong with ado adopting his Trinity model? No, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I think it's simpler than that. Uh, you know, I, I look at what we have in the New Testament. Again, I see a father and a son who share the same spirit. The Holy Spirit is referred to interchangeably as the spirit of Jesus Christ and the spirit of God. He's referred to interchangeably and the Holy Spirit. He's referred to all those things. Um, I, I see them sharing the same spirit. I see them, the Father and the Son are one. Uh, that's what Jesus says. That's what we have. We have that all throughout the Gospel of John. They are one. Uh, they have their one in spirit. They have the same spirit. That's the same spirit that lives within us. So I think that when Jesus says that anyone who loves him, his Father will love that person, we will come to them and make our home with them. I think he's talking about the Holy Spirit coming to them because that is them. The Holy Spirit is them. It's the Father and the Son. Inter again, interchangeably referred to as both of them. I don't think he's necessarily different. I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine who's also, um, he actually brought it up. He was saying, I think we make way too big of a deal out of the, out of the Trinity in our, in our teachings. We make way too big of a deal out of that. And I, I brought some of the stuff about, up about Tertullian, but I was just saying, I just, I don't see the Holy Spirit as being different than the Father and the Son. I see him being the same. Now, is he spoken about a little, like, does, does he have a specific ministry? There are things like that. He's the teacher. He's, um, he's the helper. We, we have those. Um, things in the Gospel of John, but is he different? Is he different than the Father and the Son? I don't see that. I, I don't see that. Um, so, but that's 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 me. Uh, again, that's me. Uh, so, my my thoughts on it doesn't mean that adopt that or use that. It just means that's how I I see it. Um, I worry. I worry when I hear people saying we can believe in the Trinity and be saved. We can believe in God and be saved. I worry about that. Um, I don't think so. My opinion. I don't think so. I think that's wrong. Um, so let me uh, read your comments because it looks like you guys might have chimed in a little bit on that. Um, go up here. I think this is where we were. Um, okay, uh, by Grace New Covenant says, I guess the difficulty comes from the meaning of the word slave usually has in our society. I think so too. Um, so it's harder to get to the conclusion that it can be something positive. I think you're 100% right with that. So in my earlier writings, I would say servant. I would actually change out slave with servant because I was afraid slave was going to be offensive. The problem is servant isn't really the same thing. Uh, you're, you're like a hired hand if you're a servant. Uh, and you can quit. You can quit your job. Um, so it, it wasn't really the same thing. So I was like, no, I have to really use the way the New Testament says it. But I think you're 100% right. You're trying to make a word that's, that's, a, that's a bad word and it has nothing but a negative context to it. Uh, trying to make that somehow a good thing. And I think that's, I think you're 100% right. It's difficult to do that. Um, 7 a.m., good morning, says, no one comes to the Father except through the Son. That's what I think the scriptures say. And I, I worry about um, teachings that dance around that and says, oh, well, you could just believe in God and you're good to go. I, I don't know about that. I, I don't know about that. Um, Manuel says, well, you know that most, if not all people are set in their ways of what they believe. I found uh, trusting the Holy Spirit to teach me the truth, even if it's the opposite of all I have believed. Yeah. And that's, that's a hard thing to do a lot of times, you know, when, when we get set in our ways, 
we find out that we were wrong about something, it's like humbling. You got to kind of uh, repent away from it. I think that's hard for a, a lot of people to do. Um, but yeah, absolutely. You know, we can rely on the Holy Spirit uh, to teach us everything. 7am says we need Jesus. Uh, he is the only way. Absolutely. Um, he is. And he says that. And I worry again about teachings that kind of move around him and say, well, it's, it's all right, though. If you if you believe in God, you believe in Jesus. Mm, I don't know. Jesus said, if you you believe in God, believe also in me. Um, I, I don't I don't know about that. So I worry about that. Um, yes, John 14, 6 is not just the Jews, but also the Muslims, for instance. Many of them are very loving and have a strong faith in God, but yet somehow cannot see that they need Jesus. That's true. I didn't think of the Muslims at all. Um, you're you're 100% right with that. Uh, the Muslims do believe in God. I didn't think about that. I was talking about the Jews when I was uh, mentioning this in that Bible study. I never thought about the Muslims. The Muslims believe in God too. Um, but Jesus is just a prophet or something, isn't he to them? He's a prophet. He was never anything special beyond that. Because um, he is in the Quran. Uh, Jesus is in the Quran. But I remember reading the Quran, uh, the beginning of it, where it was saying it is blasphemy if anyone says the son of Mary was somehow God. It's blasphemy. Absolute blasphemy to say that. Um, they were like saying like this, this Christ was one of these great prophets that was sent, but he is certainly not God. And they were very, very specific with that. Um, so, so, but yeah, you're 100% right. That's a great point. I didn't think of that. Um, okay, um, I'm sorry, you continued that down here. It says, somehow cannot see that they need Jesus and not, um, not uh, their own good works, okay? Um, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, the blood of the Son removes sins, and that's, that's the thing. And I was, I was kind of saying, if that isn't the case and we don't need the Son and we can just believe in God, um, why did Jesus even come then? That I, I would be confused about that. By Grace New Covenant, it says, I personally haven't formed my opinion about the Trinity, but people who say it's all the same uh, seem to forget that through faith in Jesus we are saved, and in him, in him the Spirit is in us. And it uh, looks like the Christ is in the Father. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and really, again, with the, with, with the Trinity, um, if we want to use those words, we're 100% free to, to use the Trinity, the Godhead, or any version of that. Um, we're free to do that. It's not in Scripture, um, but it's okay. If we come to that conclusion on our own and we say, you know, I think that's really how it works. I think that makes sense to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe that. That's fine. That's fine. It's not some kind of a thing where we need to be worried about it. Well, that's, that's some, you know, anti-message. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not some kind of a, a bad thing. Um, I think it, I, I've always said, I think it raises way more questions than it answers. Um, I don't like that it's not in the New Testament. Those, that's where I, I get stuck with it. I don't like that it's not in the New Testament. I really don't like that. And that for me kind of ruins the whole thing. Uh, because what I did before, and this is personal, I'm sensitive to this, but what I did before is I listened to so many things that were not in the New Testament. And I taught so many things that were not in the New Testament. And kind of purged all that out of out of everything. I deleted all my old writings that did that. And I've, I'm really committed to, I'm not moving outside the New Testament. I'm not doing that. So if it's not, if it's not, and I don't mean like never using the Old Testament. You guys know what I mean by that. But like as far as like doctrine goes, if it's not in the New Testament, I'm not teaching it. Um, you know, or if I do, it's going to be, this is what Tertullian said. Not this is what, you know, we need to believe because... You need to believe it. You know, we don't need to believe it. Um, it's somebody's opinion. It's somebody's opinion. It's a very old opinion. It goes all the way back to the infancy of the way. Well, the, the infancy of Christianity, second century. I think they had gotten rid of the way and started calling it Christianity by then. Um, but very old. This is like 100 years, 100, 100, 140, 50 years after Paul, the Trinity was, was invented. Um, so old, 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 old. It's been around forever. Um, so it's very old, and because of that, it gains a ton of credibility. Christians have been believing this for centuries. You know, it's, oh, it's, you know, that's, that's a staple. Okay, but it's not the New Testament. So did we get it wrong for centuries? That's, that's kind of the questions I ask with that. Um, Manuel says, see, this is what happens when man puts in his two cents, fails, 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 took the simplicity of the gospel and added our thinking. Um, yeah, well, we, we, we do that, though, right? I mean, we have to put our own mark on, on everything. <laughs> Uh, 7 a.m. says, I'm an ex-Muslim. I didn't know that. And Muslims think that Jesus is only a prophet, which is not true. 
Jesus is the son of God and only through believing in him can we be saved. So that's fascinating. I, first of all, I didn't know you were an ex-Muslim. So I mean, that you can give us like incredible perspective on, on a lot of this stuff then. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, so they, they do think Jesus is only a prophet, right? And, and don't they say in the Quran that it's blasphemy if you say anything beyond that? I, I remember reading that. I was flipping through the Quran um, last summer. I was in a bookstore, was, um, some bookstore at my wife, and I was flipping through it. And I remember seeing something like that where they were saying it's blasphemy if anyone says that, that the son of Mary is actually God. Um, that's absolute blasphemy. It's not. He's not. Um, he's not. He's a prophet. He's a great prophet. They spoke highly of him, but he's not God. So um, one evidence that the Holy Spirit could be not a separate person, but the Father and uh, the Son's Spirit is that Jesus said, only if he leaves, the Spirit comes. Um, that's very interesting. And I think that if we, we dove into a lot of that, um, we, might, we might find some things. You know, Jesus is there physically. Um, he's, he's there physically with them. Uh, physically, and, and it's, it's a spiritual body, and we know that because he it's like his original one. They can touch it. He can eat. He can drink. He can sit. He can talk. Um, but he also can walk through walls, and he can disappear and reappear on will. So it's, it's different. It's a different version of his body, but it's the same body. He, he retained the scars from his original body, which means it's not new. It's the same, just now it's, it's the, the perishable has now been clothed with the imperishable. So it's, it's, his, it's his body, but changed. I mean, we are going to be like that. Um, when, we are, when we are in heaven, we're going to be like that. We're going to have bodies that are, and it's my belief it's, it's these ones. It's exactly like what happened with Jesus. It doesn't matter if, you know, we want to go a different route on that. I don't really think that that's highly important, whether it's a brand new model or if it's this original model just upgraded. I, I, I know people kind of fight over that, but it's like, really, it doesn't matter. I think it's this one. I think it's this one just upgraded. Um, but we're going to be like that. Uh, we're going to be like that. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll be like that too. But, but what by grace, new covenant is saying, but you know, Jesus said he had to leave. It's to our, to their advantage. He says to the disciples that I leave, um, and I'm going to send back, uh, the Holy spirit. I'm going to send back the gift my father promised. Um, so interesting that he didn't do that while he was still there. Um, maybe because they're the same, you know, maybe because the father and the son are the Holy spirit, you know, maybe because they're the same. Um, it's a good point. Uh, 7 a.m. says, uh, yes, the deity of Christ and the work that he did on the cross, Muslims Muslims do. Um, they, so they deny the deity of Christ and the work that he did on the cross, right? Um, they, they, they say he's not God. And um, did, did, they, did they even believe he died on the cross? Is that, is that even a thing? Or is that like he, that didn't happen? That's, that's wrong. Or if it did, maybe it didn't. Okay, so they killed the prophet. You know, it's not really anything bigger or beyond that. So, okay, yes, they do deny that. Okay. So it would officially be a false teaching then because if they're if they're denying the son like that then it, it would officially be that um so so okay guys well thanks so much for tuning in and just i was like i said i was bouncing some of this stuff off you guys um like i said tomorrow the live stream will be at 6 p.m and it's going to be like that the rest of the week um Oh, 7 a.m. says they claim it was somebody else instead of Jesus. Uh, it's very evil. Uh, some, somebody else died on the, on the cross instead of Jesus, I guess. Uh, so that's, that's interesting. I mean, it's just very interesting how they, how they got to that point. But, um, but um, so yeah, tomorrow the live stream will be at uh, 6 p.m. I'll put out a thing and I really will do it. I'll really do it this time. I'll put out a, a thing saying all that and uh, I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow evening and it'll be like that the rest of the week. So have a great Tuesday. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.